So in the age of context, you're going to be collecting data from sensors and wearable computing, and th that is going to be a very high rate of, of stuff coming at you. It probably MySQL isn't going to handle it, and you're going to need a new uh, database approach, and we're going to talk to a company, TempoDB, right now about how to handle the sensor data that the world is going to generate in the, in the near future. Who are you? My name is Andrew Kronk. I'm the co-founder and CEO of TempoDB. Uh, by training, I'm an engineer, uh, but I've sort of moved into this role as CEO. It's my third company I founded and the first uh, that we've gone the funded route. Very cool. And w what is TempoDB and how did it start? So TempoDB is the time series database service. We're purpose built to store data coming from things like sensors, servers, anything we're measuring about ourselves over time. And the reason why we're working on this now is I used to work in the renewable energy industry, specifically geothermal. And in geo, you have to prove that what you're doing is better than conventional. It's same with any renewable technology. So the way we proved it is with tons and tons of sensors. We put sensors all over the place, temperature, pressure, flow rate, humidity, smart meters. We tried to collect all this data to prove that our renewable technology was better than what's out there today. But we ran into a technical problem. Every database we tried to store the data in ended up breaking. Um, so after we went through four iterations of databases inside the company, I turned to one of my coworkers and I said, I bet other people have this problem. And so we set out to build TempoDB about a year ago based on our experiences dealing with time series data in the past. And this is going to be really important. I, you know, we're seeing a, a wearable computing is mm -hmm. going up exponentially. I have a new one that has mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of sensors and mm -hmm. spitting data to the cloud. Right? Mm -hmm. um, sensor is going up. And so we're seeing 3D sensors and these sensors and sensors on our cell phone mm -hmm. and sensors in our cars and mm -hmm. sensors on our thermostats and more and more and more and more. And that's forcing database innovation. There's a, you're not the only one. There's a lot of people who are trying to think about big data or mm -hmm. uh, you know, streaming data, flow data. Mm -hmm. Twitter is having to innovate a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Twitter, Twitter is having uh, right around a billion tweets a day right now. Mm -hmm. So w w why not uh, MySQL or MongoDB or another database? What, why, why do I need your database? Yeah, it's really interesting you mentioned uh, Twitter with a thousand or a billion tweets a day. We are already seeing, as a very young company, we're just now a year old, we're seeing almost two billion data points streaming in per day. So you know, this is tens of thousands of data points per second. So this, this is a shift from human-created data to machine data. That's where we're seeing this huge explosion, and that's why purpose-built tools like TempoDB are required. Because we know, we've tried to use Oracle, we tried to use MongoDB, we tried to use all these other technologies that were made uh, as, as general purpose tools. They don't work for this very specific type of data that's being created in a huge scale now. Um, what makes your technology different than My, MySQL for this new use case, this new flow-based mm -hmm. uh, use case? Yeah, you're exactly right. It starts with the data type. And if you think about the characteristics of, of sensor data, it usually streams to you in order. You don't really ever edit it after the fact, and you read it back in order. So given those characteristics, uh, you can get a lot of efficiencies if, if you're built just for that. So um, with MySQL or MongoDB, you sort of try to index on time after the fact. But if we know that this temporal ordering is how all the data looks, you can sort of uh, build that into your database and get huge scale, huge efficiency, much faster read times, store it all. That's what we're doing with TempoDB. So you're, you're young. Mm -hmm. You're trying to go after a new innovative mm -hmm. space that hasn't really arrived yet. I mean, I, mm -hmm. we've, we've certainly seen uh, you know, early signals that a new age is coming, but we haven't seen the, the, the major work mm -hmm. happen yet. Um, what are you seeing happen in the marketplace and where, where are you planning on being? Because you're, you're doing work that other mm -hmm. people aren't, just aren't thinking about. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I feel a little bit crazy if you search time series database. It's a Wikipedia page, an open source project in us. So I feel like we're a bit ahead of the curve. But we felt this problem as engineers. You know, I, I felt this uh, very acutely. And I feel like um, more people are going to measure more data more often. And so we know that this problem exists in several fields. Uh, oil and gas, energy, we used to work in the field, uh, people in finance are asking for it, um, health and medical devices, all these problems exist today, and the shift we see is they're moving from on-premise to the cloud. That's the sort of wave we're riding at our company in the last year, that's who we're addressing. But what really gets us excited is the idea of 
Internet of Things, industrial internet, connected everything. Yeah. That is, you, you said is sort of emerging. If we ride that wave correctly, then I think we're in great position because we know what the data looks like coming off all those devices and we work with some of those companies today. Yeah, General Electric talks about the industrial internet, which is really this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're putting sensors, audio sensors inside turbines to listen to the turbine spinning mm -hmm. and it, it tells them a month before it needs maintenance mm -hmm. based on the sound. So they're just uh, dumping the sound data mm -hmm. to a database and watching uh, watching the results, right? Yeah, what, what we've seen in the past is uh, since since these general purpose databases can't store it all, the solution is let's downsample. Instead of storing every second, let's store once a minute. Or let's keep it for a month and then throw it away. But then you can't really learn from the past or understand the present and predict the future because everyone's trying to get to the part where you predict the future. But if you have a rich history, a full history of the past, that's the best way we think to get to the prediction side. Interesting. Yeah. Where do you think people are going to, companies are going to use this? We're starting to see some examples like General Electric, mm -hmm. like the oil companies. What What are they going to do with your database that that is futuristic? <laughs> yeah. So the futuristic part, I think, if when we look to what's next for us. So uh, we're a year old, and our first year we really focused on we got to nail the storage part because if you don't have storage, you can't really build anything on top of that. So we spent the last year on the storage part. And what all of our customers kept asking us, they said, well, hey, Andy, I'm streaming my data to you every single second. You have the full history of what's happened before. Can you tell me when an anomaly happens, when something crazy happens? Can I define rules that you can sort of push to me when they happen? So that is like the first step we're taking towards uh, being smarter about having a full history of the past. So you might watch all your sales, and if mm -hmm. you notice a blip in something, it kicks off an event. Or mm -hmm. in, in Rackspace's case, if we're watching uh, log file data yep. that's coming off of our cloud servers, we want to see if something uh, different is happening. Mm -hmm. and somebody's sales, somebody's uh, traffic is going crazy, or there's an intruder that's trying to do something crazy. Is, but, that, but, is that what you're thinking about? Yeah, it's, it's what I'm thinking about. The key word there is different. Different compared to what? It's all relative. So uh, I think that we can infer automatically what different means and then push it to you, that's where there's a lot of value. If the human has to go in and says, well, sales are usually around 30 or something like that, and now they're at 50, you should push it to me. We need to figure that out automatically. Yeah. How do you charge for your uh, business? What, you know, is it, uh, is it like cloud computing where I pay per megabyte or gigabyte or ter mm -hmm. terabyte <laughs> yeah. of data going yeah. through? Yeah, so we have two main models of charging today. One is very basic. For as many data points as you want to store, you pay sort of a, a, as a usage-based rate. Uh, that works well, but the thing with time series is you're always adding more. So your, your data will essentially grow unbounded. And that's what we're designed for, but IT budgets aren't designed for unbounded costs. Yeah. Um, so, so that's one dimension we charge on. The other one, which is actually more exciting to me, is charging per device. A lot of these companies are, are, are trying to build their business model around a monthly fee per device, and so we are a part of that. When you say a device, would that be a sensor in a car? It, it, it yeah, yeah, so, so when I think about devices, I think about companies like uh, Nest or Fitbit, you know, who have these data, essentially I view them as little data products that you wear on your body. So this has three sensors on it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it this would count as one device with mm -hmm. three set, separate sensor streams yep. that are streaming yep. And what's interesting about those three separate sensor streams is really it's a pedometer, but you sort of layer stuff on top. You say, well, okay, you uh, slept for this long, or this is how many steps you took, this is, uh, no, other well, this one that, does heart rate. Yeah, yeah the, the things that are derived from the raw sensors. So you have sort of like virtual sensors on top of the, the raw ones, which are made by a combination of those. Cool. Yeah. Um, for a developer, what do they need to know? Because they probably know what MySQL looks yep. like and what sharding looks like mm -hmm. and Memcached if they worked at Facebook and stuff, they know yep. what that world looks like. What does your world look like and how do they need to make a mind shift? Yeah, and so that. I think is, our, our, is one of our biggest challenges is we're a shift in the data model, right? We're all about long streams of data. We're not about tables and relating things together. So at the, at the lowest level, it's a stream of data. It's a timestamp and a value over and over and over again at whatever rate you're, you're taking it. But to add value on top of that, you might want to relate things together. Let's say you have four nest thermostats in your building. You might want to say attach some metadata to each one to say like floor equals seven, building equals D or something, and you say, give me the average temperature on the seventh floor. And look out, grab all those sensors, and, and sort of zip that together and give you the average. Got it. Yep. And how much work is that kind of relating? Because I could see, you know, soon I'm going to have six sensors on my glasses, mm -hmm. three sensors here, yep. seven sensors here, some sensors that on my thermostats, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. on and on. How do you relate all that together to make uh, Robert Scoble's world? You know? Yeah, yeah. So that is definitely the, the, the charge for our developers is think about how you want to relate stuff together before you start collecting the data. Okay. Um, 
it's, it's usually just a little bit of planning. It's not any different than you do in with, if you're using MySQL today. Um, it's just a different way of, of relating the data together after the fact. It's not a table, it's streams that you sort of join together. Okay. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your business. You started at Techstars Cloud down in San Antonio. Right? Yeah, so we're now a year old. Uh, we, we applied to Techstars, got in, and sort of formed our business around that. Um, so we're a year old. We went down to San Antonio, uh, met some of the guys from Rackspace. It was great. Uh, we ended up raising a seed round after Techstars, and we've now built our company in Chicago. Very cool. so, so being in Chicago, we're a bit of a fish out of water because a lot of the companies in Chicago are sort of B2B, uh, marketing focus, sales team focus type stuff. And yeah. we come out and say, we're infrastructure for developers. And they say, well, I don't understand, what's that? So it's, it's good and bad. We're, there's essentially no hype around what we're doing there, but it allows us to really focus. And when we come out here, everyone totally gets it. Well, we understand Twitter data, yeah. and we're soon getting into the sensor data space and the predictive. Mm -hmm. Th those are hot buzzwords. A lot of our engineers here in the San Francisco office are playing with Node.js. Yep. Are you compatible with that? Are you, is that who you're really trying to aim at, is the people who are doing this real-time work? Yeah, and so to give you a little bit of insight into how, how we think about developers is that anyone can, our, our strategy is inbound. Any developer can search time series database and come start using us. And so our, we thought, okay, small and medium guys will do this in our first year, because we're a new product, no one's ever heard of us. What we found out is some of the uh, developers at the largest companies that, in the world are searching for the same stuff. Yeah. Right. So they search time series database, they get started, they've solved their problem that they had with their other databases, and then, then we sort of like swoop in and say, okay, you've identified yourself as working at a giant oil company, let's sort of make a deal here. Yeah. Um, but it's very different than going out, having steak dinners and handshakes. We start with the developer. That is the way we enter all of these companies, and that's our focus going forward. Can you mix uh, data flows from, let's say, Twitter or Facebook or Foursquare or other places into these streams that are coming from your own sensors? I, I think that that's, that's going to be our, our challenge in this year is sort of, we, we view, uh, you, you laid out the five different areas uh, for the age of context. We view those all, as all requiring purpose-built tools. Time series requires purpose-built tools. Geolocation requires purpose-built tools. But the challenge is how are we all going to work together? Because we know throwing everything into MySQL is not the right solution. So if you have these individual silos, how do you join them all together? I think that's more of an effort that uh, will be at a company level. We'll have to figure out the best way to work with company B and company C. But uh, Tweets will never be streaming into TempoDB. We're all about you know data, numbers, not not necessarily tweets. Interesting. Yeah. I, I think you're uh, you might be a little off because uh, tweets are just like sensor data, aren't they? Really. I mean, <laughs> what's interesting is is people store counts of things that happen. Yeah. So in in TempoDB today, I know tons of people who are storing how many times the word love occurs per second or per minute, uh. right? But they're not storing the actual tweet. We're not doing text like text analysis. We're not doing any of that kind of stuff. We're all about counts, numbers, like raw data that's happening. Very cool. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting. I've been talking to the NFL, and they're they're working on a new contextual system to do all sorts of fun stuff in the stadium, uh, knowing who you are and try to predict mm -hmm. when you need a beer, <laughs> all sorts of fun stuff like yeah. that, right? So they're going to be putting sensors on the beer machines, mm -hmm. on the beer vendors. They're going to know where the beer vendor is, where mm -hmm. the beer machines are, whether the machine needs to be refilled, mm -hmm. all sorts of fun stuff to build a system that you know looks like Uber in your seat where mm -hmm. the beer comes to you, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the future of business. I, I think there's going to be a huge market for you. What do you think about so now you have you know, a few sensors on the watch on your hand. It's, to me, that's, it's not really getting to what's actually happening in our bodies. It doesn't tell me how thirsty I am. Yeah. That's what you want. You don't want how long have I been sitting for. Yeah. And so your heart rate, those are other indicators. But for me, I think once we get deeper into sensing the body, more than just topical, and, and where I'm kind of going with this is wearables, um, I think that is going to be the next big explosion of data because you're going to have access to so much more. Yeah, well, the Google Glasses have me really hot and bothered yep. along with your database technology. So yep. it's going to be a fun feature to watch. Mm -hmm. What would it look like on the screen? What, you know, as a developer, what, what would I see on my screen when I'm playing with TempoDB? Uh, unfortunately, it, it's mostly boring for lots of people. It's sort of a, a, a curve, like a, a chart with like a line going on it. And so you might see a couple lines intersecting. It's very, um, it's not exciting, I, I would say. We're a database, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so we always start to talk about like, um, a guy came on last week and he's measuring his chicken farm in Norway. And then now we're talking to this, like one of the biggest agricultural companies here in the States. Like, it's just widely applicable. And there's so many really fun examples we've seen. So 
I don't know if, if there's a right way to incorporate that. How, how do I hook all these sensors into the database and, and start collecting this data? What, what do I need to write? Are there uh, uh, ODDC tools or so, some yep. sort of tool to get the data into? Yep. The so that's a really good point. So uh, we, we came out with the REST API and we made client libraries for all the popular languages. Um, but the, when the bigger guys started coming on board, they really pushed us to say, I want this to be drop and replacement. Put an ODBC interface on it. So that's part of uh, the work we're doing right now. Very cool. Yep. Um, and where do we learn more about it? It's at tempo-db.com. We still have a dash in the name. We're Very trying cool. to get at the guy who has tempo-db.com. It's an <laughs> Italian guy who won't give it to us. And you're on Twitter and, and yep. Facebook. At tempo-db. And every, everywhere else except our domain is, is tempo-db. Very cool. Thank you so yep. much. Yep, thanks. Thank you.